Here in recent weeks, you guys have noticed I've been playing around with some color grading on my videos. You know, the color is a little different in my videos here in the last few weeks compared to, you know, a couple of months back, for instance. And the reason this is, is because I am using what are known as LUTs, L-U-T, uh, lookup tables. Uh, so a LUT is basically a template. It is basically a, a a table of information that you can save. It's a template that you can save and then later apply it to an image or a video and apply special color grading to that image or video. And I can actually apply LUTs inside OBS, which is typically what I'm doing. For example, this video that you're watching right now is actually I'm applying in real time a LUT inside OBS. I can also, after the fact, go into Caden Live and apply LUTs inside Caden Live on videos. Also inside GIMP, I can apply LUTs to my still photographs and images. Now before we get started, you probably want to go on the internet and do a search for our download free LUTs. Uh, and you'll find hundreds of these things available for download. Typically, you'll find packs of LUTs that are available for free download. So if I switch to my desktop here, I'm going to launch my graphical file manager, PC Man FM, and in my videos directory I have a directory called Assets and then LUTs. And these are some LUT packs that I found for free to download on the internet. I have 35 Rocket LUTs, and this is one I actually use a lot. These are some really nice LUTs. You can see they end in the .cube extension. This is typically what you want. That's probably the most popular format for LUTs is the .cube format, and that works in Caden Live. That works in OBS. I also have this LUTs for OBS pack here. I don't know exactly where I got that from, but I'll show you how I use that here in a minute. Small hd dash Movie LUTs, uh, XSplit LUT pack. Now, I'm sure if you just did a search for these in your favorite search engine, you would probably find these packs just as, as I did. So let me show you how to use these inside Caden Live because that's probably the program most people are going to want to use a, a, a LUT in as far as especially video content creation. So you're going to use it inside your video editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import some video. So I'm going to import the very first clip that I recorded for this particular video I'm doing today. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go ahead and drag this to the timeline here. And, and I'm going to go ahead and mute the sound because we really don't need the sound. Because all we're really interested in is what I'm going to do with the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into effects here. And what I'm going to do is I could search for LUT. There it is, apply LUT. Now I actually have this in my favorites. So if I right click on a video and go into my effects here, I have apply LUT as one of my favorites here. So I could just apply that. Then what I could do is I could click on the uh, apply LUT uh, word here inside the timeline and then go ahead and choose a specific LUT. So if I click on the folder, I'm going to navigate to a specific folder where I have some LUTs. So typically I use these here, 35-rocketstock-LUTs, and I could apply one, for example, Arabica. Now you can see exactly what it does to the colors there. So it's a very dark, very a brownish kind of LUT there. It really doesn't uh, look appropriate for what I'm doing here. Of course, I could choose this one here. Let me make this bigger. That is called Ava. And you can see that one is really kind of saturated and bright. Uh, Azrael, that actually doesn't look too bad. I could actually work with that. Let me play the video here for that. Yeah, not a bad looking LUT uh, for this kind of setup here. Uh, one that I uh, like to use sometimes is uh, McKinnon. For those of you that don't know who Peter McKinnon is, he is one of the biggest camera YouTubers. So let me go ahead and play this with the McKinnon LUT applied. And you can see that's a little darker, a little flatter, uh, but really not bad. A little too dark for, for my liking personally. But of course, you don't have to just do a single LUT and nothing else. I mean, you could always apply, I mean, you could apply multiple LUTs if you really wanted to, or you could apply a LUT. And for example, I said this was too dark. I mean, in Caden Live, I could also go in, into uh, my favorites and do lift gamma gain. And if I wanted to play around with some of this stuff, I mean, I could, I could change it however it is I want to change. I, I could add brightness or a contrast. I could add more saturation. Of course, this here would was just me just doing some random stuff here on the color wheels. And of course that looks 
very, very bad. So I'm going to delete that. One of my favorite effects actually uh, to play around with is these uh, Bezier curves. I mean, I could actually, you know, play around with, with some of this until I get the, the right colors that I want. And of course, we could really change some stuff here and get, you know, that has that really bright blown out effect that that one LUT, I forget which one it was. Was it Ava? <laughs> it almost has that same kind of effect. That may be how they achieve that in their LUT. So that is how you apply a LUT inside Caden Live. I was very, very simple to use LUTs inside Caden Live. Uh, now, let me talk about how to apply a LUT in OBS, because that's typically how I do it. Instead of having to go in in post-production and add a LUT, I like to ap apply a LUT in line right here recording inside OBS, and that's what I'm doing right now. So let me switch over to this scene here. Now, this is an empty scene. It's not my camera, because I'm actually recording my camera on a different instance of OBS, and I don't want to record that uh, on this video because it's going to have this weird inception like effect where you have a million DTs, you know, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You guys know the inception effect when you try to record yourself inside OBS. So what I did is I just opened up a, a, a empty uh, scene here, but how this would work is you would have a camera source. And so imagine this is my camera source. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to go to apply LUT. And I've already got a LUT applied to this camera, although I'm not showing it, but that is all I do. And then I just navigate to the LUT. I want to apply it directly into OBS. And then when you record in OBS, you're, you're getting the LUT applied. And, and that's what's happening here. Obviously, I, I could prove that I applied a LUT here because I could actually go into my filters. You guys are not going to see this, but if I removed this LUT completely that I am using, and this is the neutral colors from my camera, the natural colors without too much changing, although I think I had some other effects. I think I added some saturation and stuff that actually doesn't make too much sense for the natural colors. It made sense because I was trying to correct some things on the LUT that I didn't like. I'm going to go back and apply my LUT and go back to the, I think it was called DT-LUT. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, that's the one. So that's just a very simple, very simple to apply LUTs in Caden Live in OBS. It's also uh, very simple to the, apply them inside GIMP for those of you that want to uh, play around with LUTs with still images. So by open GIMP. I haven't played around too much with this in GIMP, but GIMP has a plugin called Gamic. So if I go to filters, I have Gamic dash QT. That's Gamic G comma M I C. And that is a third party plugin. It's not inside uh, GIMP by default, but it's very easy to go and grab it. Uh, I think it was packaged up for Arch Linux. I think I found the Gamic plugin inside the AUR of all places. I could be wrong about that. But say I open a uh, image such as this thumbnail from my video the other day, and then I go to filters and I go to Gamic here. And that actually opens up a second window here. I'm in a weird tiling layout here. This doesn't quite work. But anyway, I just go in here and I start, you know, playing around with some of the settings in here. Again, I, I haven't played around too much with this, so I can't really show you too much how this works. But it allows you to start applying these filters to this image. And then eventually what you could do is you could save that as a LUT and then come back to it and apply it later over and over again inside GIMP, you know, for future images. Another cool thing that I've done with uh, LUTs and the GIMP, if I go back to this workspace here. Um, so these are these LUTs are images, right? So if I showed you this LUT, this is the one I'm actually using currently inside OBS. If I open this inside GIMP, this is what a LUT actually is. It's, again, it's a lookup table. It's just a, a template of colors that gets applied. You know, basically you, you have your neutral table and you know it just takes the difference from the colors and applies them it's kind of how it works but let's imagine i want to change some stuff to this particular LUT. i mean i could go in here and and change things if i wanted to i don't know add uh, some hue saturation change the hue a little bit to this maybe add a little more saturation to this i'm going to go ahead and save that even though it's one i'm currently using i just want to see if that gets applied in line inside obs here I don't think it does. I think I have to delete the LUT. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to go back in here and reapply that LUT. And you can see 
I, I changed it quite a bit. It was, it's got quite a bit more saturation. <laughs> also, the hue has been shifted. It's a little more on the yellow green side, where before it was a little more on the blue side. I'm actually going to undo that. But that was just a uh, quick demonstration of how you can change a LUT inside GIMP. And I'm back to the LUT that I was using. So there you go. It's, it's not complicated. Go grab some free LUTs off of the internet. Make sure they end in the dot cube uh, extension and you should be fine. And Caden Live, OBS, and GIMP applying these things to your still images and of course your videos. And now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Epsy, Gabe, James, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Alan, Chuck, Kurt, uh, Commander, Angry, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Erjan, Alexander, Peace Arch and Fedora, Polytech Raver, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I just have you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.